Okay, so now that we've covered how to describe measurements using variables, units, dimensions, and functions, you might be wondering how we use these measurements to build up mathematical models that we can then use to predict the future. Right? Where we're going with here, where we're going from here is we want to make predictions with our mathematics. Right? Or with a mathematics. Okay. The basic you know framework here is you gather data. Right? You use that data to inform or build your model. And then analyze the model or solve the model you know, by hand or on the computer to predict the future. So your model will describe some rule that describes the data, and you can extend that rule into the future to predict what's going to happen next. An example of this is let's say you're back in the lab and you are filtering bacteria in petri dishes. Right? So they put a little petri dish full of bacteria, and you know we want to know how many petri dish there's going to be in 10 hours or so. Okay, so um, you could sit there in the lab and count them every hour, or you could be a little bit smarter and you can and you can do this all at once by using multiple colonies. Let's say you do this on several bacteria dishes. Time. And each bacteria dish will have a different initial population. And then after one hour, right, population hour, you'll check them all and see how much each one grew. Right? So let's say in colony one started with zero, and then an hour later there was still zero. Okay. Let's say in colony two you started with half a million. And after you pulled it out of the fridge an hour later, there was a million. Let's say colony three million and ends up with six and let's say colony four 1.5 million and you end up with and let's say colony five had two million start and then after an hour counted up four million okay so then if we were to plot this data we get a plot that looks like right on the x-axis we'll have the initial population right or population at time t whatever the time was when we started the experiment and then on the y-axis, we'll have population at t plus one, right? One hour later. Okay? So if we add our data here, right, at zero, at zero, there were zero, started with zero, ends up with zero an hour later. At, you know, half a million, ends up with one million. At two million, five, ends up with one million. One, two. Then one, okay, right. At half a million, we end up with one. Three million starting population, we end up with six. 1.5 million, three. And when we started with two million, we ended up with four. And this data actually lies on a nice clean line, right? And if we were to check the slope of that line, you know, the slope here is 2. All right. And if you check the data, right, each population is doubling after one hour. Okay. So if we describe this function, right, from pt to pt plus 1, population at time t, population at time t plus 1, one hour later, it would follow, you know, this line, right, 2, right, population one hour later is twice what you start based on this data that we collected after one hour with a bunch of different initial populations. Okay? We observed that the populations doubled, right? So first we gathered our data, and then we built this model here, right? We're going to say that population is going to double what it was an hour ago. So this equation here is an example of a discrete time dynamical system because it describes a quantity that's changing over time as a function of itself, okay? And it's changing in discrete time, since we're measuring from this time here to a time one hour later, right? So these discrete intervals, okay? And then if we look, you know, on the right-hand side here, right, this 2pt, you know, this function 
of our current state. Right, this here is what we call the updating function. All right, and we'll get into that more later. But what we can do with this model, right, is we can predict the future, right? So we gathered some data, we built a model that describes the rule, that describes this data, and now we have a model for population growth. in this experiment. And now instead of sitting there for another hour, we can use our model to predict the population in the next year, right? So we can predict populations after any number of hours, as long as they're integer. Okay, so let's say we wanna know, okay, in colony, let's say two, How many will there be after one hour, one more hour, one more hour? Okay, so colony two, remember we started with uh, time, let's say zero. We started with a million. Okay, we're looking at this column. Okay. Started with half a million, and then after one hour, we went up to one million. And so T0, it was half a million. T1, 1 million. T2, right, one more hour. What's the population? Well, we can use our formula, right? We have T, e, T e plus 1 is equal to 2 times population. So in this case, if we're asking about time 2 hours, right? So time currently one hour, and then time after an hour will be two. So our new equation will be P time two is equal to two times P at time one, which we know the value of, it's one. So our population after two hours will be two, two million. Okay, so we can predict, you know, by repeatedly applying this formula, we can predict the population after any number of integer Okay, and the key here, the key thing here is, you know, we've based all this on some data, right? We did a bunch of different colonies, we measured the population at one time and then an hour later, and now we're using that to predict it for all time, right? But, you know, if we were actually responsible for building accurate models, you know, you want to continue to experiment, right? You don't want to just stop here and say, I have a rule, and it's going to follow this rule for all time. You don't really know that it's going to do that. You want to continue to experiment to either check or update your model. All right. So it's kind of a continuous process. You don't just gather the data, build the model, make a prediction. You make your prediction, gather more data, update your model, make more predictions, and so on. Let's do another example. All right, let's say you are counting, or you know, trying to measure tree height. Maybe you're interested in build, getting a tree in your backyard. You want to know how, how fast it's going to grow. All right, so let's say you go around your neighborhood and you look at the trees at the same time that you want to plant and you measure the tree heights, right? You measure heights on one day. And then a year later, right? And you want to you want to know how how much do they grow during that year, right? So you collect a lot of data, and let's say you find that trees, you know, on average maybe they grew about one meter over a year. Okay, so they grew one meter taller in height over that one. So then you could write down a tree dynamical system that tells you height after one year is going to be the height of the previous year plus one meter. If they grew one meter, that means height the next year was just height the previous year plus one. So then you could use this, you know, to predict, let's say, I plant something, you know, tree of height 12.2 meters, right? So let's say that's my zero. Then the model will predict that, you know, after one year, it'll be 
the same height plus one, so 12.1, 13.2, right? And then a year later, it'll be h1 again plus one, right? So it's t plus one is equal to t, which is t plus one, 13.1, 14 plus two, okay? And so on, right? You can keep checking to see, okay, how tall is this tree gonna get? And based on this model, right, it's just gonna keep growing one meter forever, which may or may not be realistic, right? So you always wanna reevaluate these models. Okay, we'll do one last example before I move on. Um, so let's say you're a doctor and you're prescribing some medication. Okay. And let's say you know that the patients will absorb 50% of the concentration or, or maybe of the drug each day, right? So then you decide, okay, I'm going to prescribe, you know, one milligram a day, okay? So then the question is, okay, how can I model, you know, how much drug is in their system each day? Okay, so you start with some amount of drug, right, MT. Then after one day, you're gonna absorb 50% of it. You're gonna end up with half of what you started with. And then you're gonna take your next dosage. So then you're gonna add one milligram. And that gives you, your, uh, you know, the amount of drug in your system at the end of that. Okay. So we could write this down as a discrete time dynamic system, right? Mt plus one is equal to zero point plus one, right? So whatever you had the day before, you absorb half of it, so you have half of it left, and then you're adding in, you know, another milligram by taking your next. Okay. So we could plot this too, and you know, use it to make prediction. Right. So let's say we plot this. Right, let's say here will be MT, right? medication, you know, the amount of medication you have on one day, medication you have the next day on the y-axis. Okay. So then, you know, after one, you start with zero, then you'll go up to one because you'll take that dosage, right? So that'd be one data point here. And then maybe after one day, Right, you'll have half left plus one, so you'll go up to 1.5. You know, after two days, right? Start. If you start with an amount of two. This was if you started with uh, one milligram in your system. Then a day later, you'll have 1.5 milligrams because you absorb half of it, and then you take one more milligram. If you start with two milligrams in your system, then the next day you'll have times a half, you'll have one left, and then you'll add one more, so you'll have two milligrams left, right? So this also has a straight line, right? So then you could ask, okay, if I start with, let's say, let's start with maybe six milligrams in my, right? You could go up to this graph, and you could read it up, or you could plug it into this model, right? You could say N1, if I start with six, Right, I'm going to end up with four milligrams. Right, so we drew a pretty good model here. Right, and you can ask, okay, if I start, you know, with zero, and I keep doing this process on and on, what is my dosage eventually going to be? Right, so you can keep asking questions with models like that, and we'll get into that a little bit more in the next set of videos.